Far From Any Road, The Handsome Family. This is the Th Thackray, Thatchray, Thackray Uno. And it's a DIY-ish tube amp that uh, an owner sent it to me and it actually exists, yeah, it actually exists on Etsy, although you can download the plans and build one yourself if you wanted to. And it's a little tiny round for some reason, class A tube amp. And I don't hate it, but we got to talk about it. So I've had other uh, headphones on it besides these two. These are the Koss. What's your model number again? You're the great ones that break. In fact, this is the pair that I ripped apart on its review. SP330? Are you the SP330? I just spent, just today in February, I put them back together because I was just like, oh. And if you just gave me this as a tube amp, and I had never heard other tube amps, I'd be like, wow, this is actually doing something. And you know, HE600s are like the poster child for, hey, did tube amps do anything? Hold. Oh, um, I've got the dark voice turned on, and I've got the 789 turned on. 789, obviously you're testing for linearity perfection. And then that is a modified dark voice. There are different tubes in it than default. And it wouldn't matter because this thing runs around $130 on Etsy. And that's like $289 right now on Amazon. And then the tubes are probably another $50, $60 bucks in random tubes that people have told me to buy. You, you want to know what tubes I've got? Join the $10 Patreon tier. Ask Joe in the Telegram chat because he's the one that's like, hey, buy these. And I don't look or read or understand. I just... When people tell me to buy things in that chat, I just I just buy them and then shove them in things. Shove it. So, it's a Class A, which is, I don't know, is that unique for a lot of tubes? It, it generates a lot of heat, because um, usually tube amp generates heat from the tubes. This has got five heat sinks around it. Kind of looks like something you'd install in like a spaceship in the future, but in the past. Like a 1957's classic movie, blah, 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 blah from Mars. They would yank out this module from one of their like cardboard cutout. Thing. That's what it looks like. It actually has a power LED. That's amber. It's got an amber LED. I didn't even know they still made those. Like I, I seriously haven't seen an amber just power LED and fuck. Maybe did Atari have an amber LED? I don't know. It's weird. It's very weird. And that's one of the reasons I agreed to review it because it's like they were designing it and then fucking got drunk and then designed it like <laughs> backwards because if you look at the one I've got plugged into it there are currently three wires but there's four points of interest you see there's a power wire there's a signal wire there's the output cable for the headphone and then there's the volume knob and it would make perfect legitimate fuck off sense if you had your input in the back and your power in the back and this was the front and you had your volume knob and your output in fact I, every time I take this thing out, I, I poke it up and I'm like, all right, I'll plug the source into the back, plug the power into the back, and plug the headphones into the front, that's the volume knob. It's not the way it is. That's the output, and that's the input, and there's your volume knob. So if, in the sense of, uh, even amps don't really fuck this up, except for maybe the Tor, which is ironically another tube amp, where the input and output are top-loaded quarter inch, and they're sort of like over the tube, and that's like even weirder. But you, 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 if you want to face the volume knob towards you, you plug your headphones in the back, and then you plug your source into the front. I guess this makes sense if you're using a portable player to, as your source, and then you just leave your headphones wired behind the table or something, then that's fine. But most people on Earth and most amps will have the actual headphone output facing you so that you know you're, you're, you have ability. And then you have the power sort of like here, and good fucking luck, with the volume knob, so it, it's like <laughs> quirky. Quirky's the word. It's also a raw circuit board. If you look on Etsy, um, this is the Facebook page for it because I had to search it out. I had to it's revision zero, by the way. Maybe they fixed it in revision not zero. Uh, and he says, get an Etsy 129. There's only one available. It'll. I thought this amp sounded great. Blah, 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 blah. It's got three five star reviews and one one star review. And I understand the one-star review. We're gonna get into that right now, in fact. Um, right now, at this moment, 
it's fine. It's fine. I have the volume turned up. You can hear when you turn the volume pot, like it sounds like someone's going <laughs> like it's, it's making like a rubbing sound, even though it's not, but it's coming through the headphones. But right this minute, there's very little transformer whine. This noise. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I hooked this up to review it last night, and I had it on, and I had it on. I went inside, made dinner, it came back. It's a tube app, but I have it on this red thing for other reasons. But um, I came back, and I thought it was going to explode. Bombs don't make that much noise before they explode. It was like, and I unplugged everything, and I plugged it all back in. Same shit. I took out different headphones, same shit. So I just turned it off. When there's no on off, there's just unplug. So we come to another slight flaw of the unit. Like here's the power brick. And you know what they really should make? And I don't know if anyone does this. Does anyone make power bricks like this that are designed to sit next to your equipment on your desk and have the power switch on the top of it? Because then that would work fine. I would actually prefer that for a lot of my equipment. Then, then I wouldn't be able to complain about like Rebel Amp or the Rebel Amp's directly plugged in, but I wouldn't mind if like I had a lineup of nice power bricks I could turn all my equipment on and off with. But yeah, there's no way to turn this off. You plug it in, you plug this in. What is this? 24 volt, three amps. Once it's plugged in, it's on. It, the LED comes on, it's on. There's no, it just doesn't push in, it's, it's it. You want it off, now it's off. And I just heard the left side go, uh, the left side sounds like uh, tinnitus. And it's fading out slowly. Little pop, definitely a hum, a buzz. And the buzz is going down. Now it's, good. now it's not gone, it's just almost inaudible. And this is fine. If this is the way the headphone amp was the entire time I've had it, this would get an actually positive review. I think you should check one out. It's got these fucking weird quirks. But last night and the couple times before that, and you can't control it. Like when it decides to freak out, it freaks out. You also can't tube swap because it's, uh, actually wait, can you tube swap? Yeah, you can. You can tube swap. My concern is you have to be real careful. A, holding it, you can't touch it. That's one of the things, I gotta unplug or plug my, my headphones in and I have to like brace against the circuit board, but I don't wanna to touch that resistor. So I, I do like that and then you gotta plug it in and you have to like grab the volume knob because it's the only thing, it's not a heat. It's like being a bear trap that you have to plug headphones into. Cause these are hot. These aren't a little hot, they hot. And that tube is hot and glass and they don't, is. There's no box, there's no nothing. It's got mount holes for something. I don't think they sell the something. Um, as far as how it sounds. Oh. oh it's, it's giving me the show. Shh, quiet, baby. Chew on some music. Uh, I'm going to give you the, the straight now, right now, compared to the dark voice, it's narrow and it's tubey. It's not, not tubey, it's tubey, but in a dark voice. Granted, the dark voice by default is twice the price and that's with stock tubes. Um, so I think it's more looking at competing with like the little dots. I've actually did a little search and there's two tube amps that I could recommend roughly in the same price range. Uh, there's a 289 Dark Voice. There's the Lox GP20, which is that balance tube amp that you have to have to to enjoy it fully. To be all honest, you need to feed it a balanced signal and need to use the balanced output on the front. Uh, if you feed it RCA and you use a quarter inch output, it's just okay. Which actually would probably compete directly with this, and that's $99. And then there's the Little Dot Mark II. Actually, it says Mark II, Mark II. So this is a Mark II, Mark II. Hello? Which is $150, and that uses four, amp, four tubes, and I remember it, and it definitely is tubey, and it definitely isn't noisy. My biggest problem with this, despite not having the ability to shut it off, having the wires in some sort of schizophrenic arrangement, 
is that occasionally it just gets noisy. When it's not noisy, or when you're playing music, and you could you could drown out any amount of noise, it definitely feels like a tube. HD600s will tell you the truth. Two Fs, truth. Otis Taylor. See if I pause it right now, there's no noise. We are just the slightest tube hum and there's just that just always is going to be there on almost every tube except for like the $1,700 inspire dragon like that will also tube hum if I turn it up loud enough and I listen but this is just it's, this is fine I completely accept this amount of hum and it is a very enjoyable experience right now if I go like this And then there's width. See, the problem with this in the single tube is it doesn't add width. These 600s are still narrow. If I go from there to there. It's very clean and very straight. This definitely adds a little bit of like low end bloom. It adds things that I like in a tube amp. Very simple. I add things I like in a tube amp. But does it replace like higher end tube amps? That being like with the highest end tube amp. No. So I'm going to I'm gonna reluctantly give this a recommendation. I am, I'm not going to, I, look, the guy did a thing. He sells it on Etsy. It's cute. It's hot. It does sound tuby. It just doesn't sound wide and tuby. So you got to be careful. If you're looking for extra width, this is not it. Unless you start swapping tubes. Um, the other problem I have with it, and I'm going to risk burning my hand. No, I'm not. Zeos ain't going to risk that. Um, because it's not in a case, that doesn't just affect your ability to hold it. That really gives you a real problem when you look at the bottom, which is just all the exposed contacts. There's rubber feet. There's five rubber feet. But even, especially the tube mounts are all really far down. So yesterday, this thing was getting hot. and It's hot. It's real hot. And I have like, these are, you know, foam yoga mats that I cover my desk with. And this is a piece of foam yoga mat. And this is cloth. And I'm like, that's probably not the best case scenario for, you know, keeping this on for seven hours while I go do other things and let it warm up. So I went and got a metal amp out of my closet. I got a, a TAC amp. And I went to put it on top and I went, oh shit. Do I trust that rubber foot not to be slightly too short and then ground out where I'm putting it down? So if you do get one of these, you need to go out and get yourself a nice piece of tile. Not the audio reviewer. Hashtag tile forever. But like a piece of ceramic tile. And then put this on that. Because that will protect it from anything getting burned and doesn't conduct electricity. So that would be my only other... I have tiles here with my cat's water dishes on it. I'm just going to peel up a fucking tile from my water dish. So it's a quirky bastard. It's decently powerful for like HD 600s. I'm not having any issue powering those. And I, I am feeding it, by the way. This wire comes with it. This cable creations wire comes with it, which is another reason to support my, this is probably for a portable player because it gives you like a one and a half foot, three and a half to three and a half with a right angle. So you would plug your portable player into this and have it in the front. And then your headphones are just happen to be in the back. Uh, I can accept it. I can accept that. I'm using the Enog 2 Pro and I do not have it on the highest gain setting because it actually is a little bit shouty. Like the volume control doesn't quite give you the range I'd like. So if I can lower the DAX output or you could lower your player's output, then you get a little more controllability here. I'm going to try to keep this review short. My reviews have gotten insanely long. In fact, if you, I'm probably, I'm trying to judge my mental state by saying I am 11 and a half minutes into this review. I want to be nine, but I think I'm 11 and a half. So we'll see how when it gets to me actually reviewing it. I don't get any distortion either. Like this is either 600, so they're not like the easiest things to do to drive. Ooh, Bruce Willis, let's put Bruce Willis on. And that's loud as fuck. I am not even at 12 o'clock. I'm at like 1130. HD 600s 
on medium output gain of the Gashelli. And it's loud. I mean, if if you're looking for a two, if your problem with tube amps, here's 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 the real sell. If you want to get a tube amp, and it doesn't have to be like a little, you're just looking for a tube amp that has a load of power and can deliver without distortion for headphones up to like 300 ohm. There you go. Couple things you got to deal with: the wires and the heat and the fact you can't fucking turn it off. And then you're, you're again dealing with if you're going to unplug this, you're probably better off just unplugging this or getting like a remote power like Christmas light turn on or offer thing. That's what they're called, right? Link to a Christmas light turn on or offer remote control thing. So you can come home, you can leave the remote control by your door and you can go click and your little tube amp comes on. You can go take a leak and come out and get a cheese stick and then you could have your tube amp ready to go. I get you, guarantee you there's people that do that, by the way. Like, I, al I almost want to do that. If I know I'm coming home and I want to listen to tubes, I can leave the power switch on in my Solaris and then have my uh, Alexa know that when my phone returns at this time slot to turn on that outlet and then my tube amp will be ready. Eh? That's some crazy level. That's almost replaced the uh, power pole outside levels of bullshittery. But at least it seems more practical. So yeah, it's very loud and it's cleanly loud. It doesn't distort. I've distorted things on my dark voice. I plugged in harder to drive headphones. These these 600s, I do not believe I can even get them to distort on this. Not with these new tubes. Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna die. I don't. I don't want to die. Actually, both of these at around 11 o'clock are death for 600s. So I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's weird. It's narrow-ish. It doesn't have the width I'd like. But I think that's just a that's just the design. I don't think you're gonna get anything out of it. There's also those two blue boxes with the little screw terminals, and I think that's for biasing each side. And you could turn it down. Like I I haven't played with it because I don't want to touch it off the user settings. But I'm pretty sure if you needed to lower the gains, you could do it down there, and then it'll be a little more manageable. But um yeah. So thank you for the uh, patron who sent this to me. I believe he's a patron. If he's not a patron. Then he should be. Um, but then he could see these videos early, ask me any questions he wants on the Patreon, and participate in the yarn sales for $5 a month. Uh, for $10 a month, he could join the private Telegram chat, where those people know everything. Those people tell me what to buy. Like tubes. Like fucking Joe and tubes. Mm. And then, uh, above that, above the $5 and $10 tiers, there are very, very special tiers that are going to be worked out shortly. That have to do with um, a lot of shipping of a lot of headphones to a lot of people. Getting to it, all right? Also, Axpona is happening. If you don't know, I'm going to start. I'm going to have an announcement video probably before this one goes live. But Axpona is happening. We've been granted the uh, affordable audio room. So we don't have to start a GoFundMe for that, at least. But we are still trying to fill it. And uh, we are going to be looking for volunteers to help out. It's a very small room this time. Not as big as RMAF. But there's, I want to leave the room and go out into the, so someone has to be there. So it'll always be either me or DMS there, but guests would be nice. Um, yeah, I, I approve. I approve, although it's weird AF. I think if there was a newer revision, you rearrange where things sort of hook up, because it's not a complicated circuit in the slightest. You could see the traces on it, at least those to bottom traces. I think if it was a little bit better designed as far as connectivity, this would be an easy sell. And then you put it in, just put it, you could even have the heat sink stick up. Just, I don't like, I don't like that. That's, that's scary. I hate when contacts are like looking to ground out on stuff. Anyway, that's all. Uh, Hi-Fi Guides will have a post. I think there's a DIY section there now. I don't know if I'd count this as DIY since you can buy it on Etsy. But I guess the plans are also out there so you could just you know, build it yourself. There's a square one. Huh. Square one makes a lot more sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, wallpaper also. Get her. Just crop her out. Put her on your phone. Looks awesome. That's it. That's it? Right. Short. Short. Keeping it short. Keeping it short. See you tomorrow. Short. Short.